Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be reviewing Mighty Goose for the Nintendo Switch. So when I did my list of upcoming games for the month of June, Mighty Goose was right at the top as one of the most exciting indies that I couldn't wait to play. Now, question is, am I happy with the $19.99 I spent to purchase this game? Or would I have rather maybe waited for a sale or not bought it at all? Well, let's look at that today in our review. Now, as we go through this video, don't forget that if you'd like this content, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now, Mighty Goose positions itself as a retro styled run and gun shooter with fast paced, over the top action and a great soundtrack. And after playing through hours of the game, I would agree with all these statements above. And if you want to sort of position yourself on series that already exist that we could compare Mighty Goose to, it almost feels like a mix of elements of Metal Slug, Gunstar Heroes, and even a storyline that is very reminiscent of the old school Battletoads series. And be prepared for a lot of references and nods to other classic action series such as Mega Man X and even references to anime like Dragon Ball Z. And you know what, I'm not going to let the suspense last any longer. Mighty Goose actually manages to blend all these elements and offer on a very solid and enjoyable product. But now let's look at why it's that solid and that enjoyable. Now for the gameplay in Mighty Goose, you have the choice between moving your character either with the left joystick or using the D-pad. I personally prefer the D-pad and you'll find out why in a couple of seconds. The action buttons, basically the Y button is your fire button, B button is your jump button, X is your alternate weapon, and the A button is a ever so important dodge roll mechanic. Now your main weapon at its base is a single fire weapon that will basically depend on your speed and ability to mash. It's important to also note that you can fire in all four major cardinal directions, but you can't fire at 45 degree angles, which is why I actually opted for using the D-pad rather than using a joystick. Now there are a couple of advanced mechanics that you'll eventually have to master in Mighty Goose. Number one is that when you are jumping or falling, you can fire towards the ground to actually hover above the ground. It'll allow you to fire on your enemies for above and actually help you in certain platforming sections. Secondly, and I pointed to it earlier, the dodge roll mechanic is one of the most important mechanics in the game because you are actually invulnerable during that dodge. So not only does it help you to position yourself, but it's your main defensive option when bullets are flying at you from every direction. And you'll figure out pretty early on in the game that stuff gets so hectic, explosions and animations everywhere, that sometimes you actually have trouble tracking the action and actually getting into a flow of sometimes dodging even if you don't actually see weapons, but more you know that most likely stuff is flying towards you, is going to become one of the most important things to develop to actually be successful and progress through the levels. Now Mighty Goose also offers a variety of weapon upgrades that will be available by random drops or even in certain chests. And those weapon upgrades are things like a machine gun, a shotgun, a rocket launcher, and even a Tesla weapon. All these special weapons, however, come with a limited amount of ammo. Once you're done, you flip back to your basic weapon. It's also important to note that melee is actually an option for Mighty Goose. When you get close enough to an enemy, he'll switch from a gun attack to a melee attack that actually will be the way with dealing with certain enemies, especially those that are equipped with shields. And finally, in the basic mechanics of the game, you have your super mode that is basically accessible through doing damage to enemies. When your bar is full, you hit your back triggers, the ZR and ZL trigger, and basically you become invulnerable and it upgrades automatically the version of the weapon that you're currently sporting. Now, the level designs in Mighty Goose are very solid, with most of them being very fast paced and basically a huge variety of new enemies each and every level. Now you do have your basic grunts and basic enemies that return at each stage, but each level is sure to introduce at least one or two new types of enemies that you're basically going to have to figure out how to deal with the most efficiently. The bosses in Mighty Goose, once again, are large and in charge, generally taking up almost the whole screen and being a ton of fun to deal with. Now another thing that makes Mighty Goose quite a decent offering is the customization options. There are tons of ways that you can adapt your gameplay to how you prefer to play the game. Number one, as you go through the different stages, you will unlock new alternate weapons. Those alternate weapons can be things such as recharging automatically your super gauge 
or simply bombs that you can throw at enemies that refresh every 7 or 8 seconds. Secondly, Mighty Goose's armor is also upgradable, and these upgrades are unlocked by once again making your way through the stages. When you get to the upgrade section in your armor, you basically have 100 points that you can distribute any way you want. Different upgrades have different point values, meaning that you have to find whichever combination fits best for you. My personal favorite upgrade so far is the one that is a nod to the Dragon Ball Z franchise that is called the Ultra Instinct upgrade, giving you the ability to not only fill your super gauge through damaging enemies, but also by successfully dodging their attacks. Another one of these upgrades is the nod to the Mega Man X series, giving you the ability to charge your buster. And these upgrades go on and on and unlock more and more as you go through the gameplay. And as I said, you'll find out which combination works best for your style. And lastly, you can also choose which companion will accompany you on missions. Certain companions will attack enemies for you, others will give you upgrades such as weapon upgrades randomly throughout the stages. And all these upgrades are available in between the stages in the armory section of the menu. Another interesting fact that I think is going to attract a lot of people to try out Mighty Goose is that these run and gun games often come with a quite high difficulty level. And although I would argue that it's no different from Mighty Goose, Mighty Goose actually offers you quite a few accessibility options to lower this difficulty level, especially if you're having difficulty with certain specific sections. First of all, if you're having difficulty mashing your weapon, there's actually an option to auto fire, meaning that the game will basically mash for you. Of course, this could also be remedied with a turbo controller, but not everyone has that at hand. And lastly, there's almost like a cheat or assist system automatically built into the game. And it's quite odd because the game never actually explains that this is accessible to you. But basically, as you start killing enemies, you acquire currency in the form of coins. If you hit your start button, at any point you can access an in-game shop, even mid-level, where you can purchase weapon upgrades and even vehicle upgrades. What that means is that if you're having a particular problem with a section of the stage, and you're playing through it many, many times, eventually you will acquire quite a bit of currency. At that point, you can buy yourself a bunch of upgrades and force your way through that part of the stage. I even used it personally for one boss fight that I was having a lot of trouble with. I just bought a bunch of upgrades and basically slaughtered it. Of course, this never been explained in the game. I think they really wanted it there as an option, like I said, to assist you, but not necessarily your main way of dealing with objectives in the game. They want you to try a few times and find a tactic to play around them. If you take all this and you mix it together, it makes an incredible package that delivers on tons of fun and tons of action. And on top of all this, a beautiful pixel art style, extremely responsive and crisp controls, and a really pumping soundtrack, you've got a great game on your hands. And I really love the over-the-top action moments where you have a goose head that just pops on screen, squawking because you got a massive kill, or the way they slow down the action during massive action sequences so that you can really take a second to look at all the explosions and and like I said, all the in-between stage cutscenes really strongly remind me of the vibe of the old school Battletoad series with some over the top, really ridiculous action sequences and your main hero always responding with one thing, a squawk. And if you ask me what I could improve or change about the game, honestly, I have a really difficult time coming up with something I didn't like about Mighty Goose. I do think that some people will dislike how hectic the action sequences become and how sometimes you'll take damage, but you'll never see what exactly caused that damage. But like I said, I think that was voluntary by the developers to really push that over the top action feeling. So now let's get to the verdict section on Mighty Goose. Now, if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, I don't give a numerical score. I give an overall statement that is a recommendation on whether I think you should pick up the game or not. If you want to see what all those different statements I use are, you can look down below in the description of the video. Now, a lot of you probably already see this coming, but in the case of Mighty Goose, I'm going to give this game a rating of a hidden gem. This is a top-notch game in my opinion. Would I like the price to be maybe $5 lower? 
Yes, I would. But nonetheless, at $20, I do not regret my choice of purchasing this game at all. I could add in that if this is your first run and gun experience and you're unsure you're going to like that type of gameplay, you can always wait for a sale. It'll probably come along in a little bit. I'd also like to throw in there that I'm really hoping for a physical release from a company like Limited Run Games and I will be first in line to pick up my physical copy of Mighty Goose. So that is pretty much it for my review of the game. Let me know if you picked up the game. Do you like it? Don't you? Do you agree with any of my statements or do you disagree? Let me know down below in the comments. And on the way out, just a quick reminder that if you did like this content to please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my new content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.